So today I'm going to share a little story with you guys about how a complete stranger proposed to me. Hey guys, it's Remy. Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, yes, you read that title correct. But really quick before I get into that, do you guys like this new hair look I'm rocking? I'm like, so into the faux bangs look right now. I got requested to do a tutorial on it a couple times on Instagram, so if you guys on here on YouTube also want to see it, then let me know in the comments down below. So today I'm going to share a story with you guys about how a complete stranger asked for my hand in marriage. And some of you guys may be thinking like, so did he get down on one knee? Did he like have a ring? What do you mean? Um, no, he proposed to me Egyptian style. So let's rewind. Okay, come on, I'm trying to tell a story. So let's rewind to the year 2014 when little old me was in her sophomore year of college. Yeah, sophomore year of college. And let me just paint this picture for you guys. So this guy, we're gonna call him Tim. Tim is like the least Egyptian name, by the way. Which, by the way, yes, he's Egyptian. So Tim's parents and my parents have been friends for a very long time. They go way back. And Tim and I don't know each other because Tim lives in another state. So I live in North Carolina, he lives in a completely different state. I never knew Tim, I never knew a Tim existed but there was a Tim. So Tim's mom is scrolling through Facebook one day and oh, she comes across a picture that my mom uploaded of me or me and my mom. I was in the picture. So Tim's mom goes, oh, what a lovely young lady. So Tim's mom sees that little Remy isn't so little anymore and she calls my mom. So they ask about me, ask how I'm doing. My parents tell them, well, She's in college. They were like, fantastic. So basically they're like, we're actually coming to North Carolina for no reason at all. Just what a wink and ink. We just want to come to North Carolina and we want to visit you guys. So Tim's parents fly to North Carolina. They have lunch with my parents and they were like, so. So our son Tim, who is 33 by the way, and I was 20 years old at the time. So that makes him or made him 13 years older than me. He saw a picture of your daughter on Facebook and my mom's words to me exactly were, he fell in love. Tim has a great job. He makes this amount of money. He loves God. He's a man of God. He's a great person and he wants to marry your daughter. And my parents were like, well, Tim is just, he just sounds like a winner. So let's just pause the story real quick for anyone that is confused. So this is how marriages in Egypt usually happen. Usually it's like the parents kind of play Cupid and match up their children together. It's not like an arranged marriage or anything because they're not forcing you to do it, but they're just like introducing you. And if you hit it off, great. If you don't, then you don't. Okay, so back to the story. So I am in the middle of exam week at school and I am just now waking up from the best nap of my life. And I check my phone and tell me why I have 17 missed calls from my mom and dad. 17 missed calls and like friggin' 10, 12 text messages. I don't remember, but it was something crazy. And I was just like, Oh my gosh, like who died? So I call my mom back and I'm like, hello. And she's like, Ruma, which by the way, like my nickname in Arabic is Ruma. So she's like, Ruma. And I was just like, okay, phew, nobody died. So I'm like, eh, yeah. I'm like, why do I have 17 missed calls from you guys? And she's just like, somebody wants to marry you. I'm like, wait, what? Like I'm still half asleep here and I'm just, like in the middle of exam week, stressed about math and biology and crap, and she's talking about somebody wants to marry me. Like I was a sophomore in college living my best life and my mom is talking about somebody wants to marry you and she's oh so excited. So I'm like, okay, I'll play along. Who wants to marry me? And she tells me about lovely Tim. So at the time, I asked what any sophomore 20-year-old college girl is going to ask. Well, is he cute? So her voice like gets really high and that's how I know my mom is lying because she's like, yeah, he's cute. And I'm like, okay, send me a picture. She sends me a picture. Tim was not my cup of tea. I'm like, absolutely not. And she's like, 
Well, no, 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 just listen. He went to so-and-so college. He works in this field. He makes this amount of money. He has his own house, his own car, blah, 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 blah. And she's like reading a list to me of all of his accomplishments. And I'm like, that's great. Isn't that what I'm in college for? Like, isn't this the whole point of me being in college is so that I can also be a successful person on my own? She's like, but Uruma, and I'm like, no. And she's just like, just listen to me. And I'm like, absolutely not. And so anyways, I'm on the phone with her, like maximum it was like 15, 20 minutes because I just couldn't believe what she was saying to me. And then when she told me that he was a whole 13 years older than me, I was just like, what in the arranged marriages is going on here? I am not worrying about this right now. Like I have a test tomorrow and I'm trying to focus on that. And I'm just going off on her because I'm just so like confused and overwhelmed at this point because I'm like, wait, wait, wait. I knew my parents were like Egyptian, but I didn't know they were that Egyptian. And she's like, well, your dad wants to talk with you about this. So I was like, okay, calling him next. So I call my dad and he's like, hello. And I'm like, mom told me you guys are trying to marry me off to a 33 year old stranger that I don't even know that lives in blah blah state and listen it's not happening and my dad is just like your mother can't keep any exciting news to herself for two days and he was like we were gonna tell you about this when you came home this weekend and I was like well guess what I am no longer coming home this weekend so my dad and I actually had like the best conversation that night we had such a long heart to heart on the phone I think we were on the phone for like three hours maybe and we were just talking the whole night about life and marriage and just you know moving forward like with my love life that night is when I broke it to my dad I said Baba that's what I call my dad in Arabic I was like Baba I like American boys my dad almost had like a mini panic attack when I said that and he was like wait what what do you mean you like American boys and I was like well you brought us to America where I am surrounded by American boys uh, it's not the craziest thing in the world if I begin to develop crushes on American boys. And he's just like, well, I think there's great Egyptian guys out there too. And I was like, yes, there are. And they are not here. Like, don't get me wrong. If I were to meet a great Egyptian guy that I'm attracted to and we click well, like, I'm not saying like I'm anti that. I'm just saying like what I'm surrounded by is what I'm attracted to and what I learned to become attracted to ever since like growing up here my entire life. Does that make sense? Okay, like it would be different if there were a ton of Egyptian guys my age around me, but there isn't. The city I grew up in, and even like the church I go to and everything, there's like none. Zip, zero, none. So that's the point I was trying to make to my dad, and I'm so glad that like my parents are like my friends because I'm able to have open, honest conversations with them like this. And really, I'm just lucky that I have parents that respond in a way where they're not just shutting me down completely and like being closed-minded and it's either their way or the highway like I'm just thankful that my parents actually listen to me and they're willing to have that like open dialogue back and forth to talk about things like this because these are big life decisions in Egyptian culture something that you guys may not know is that it's kind of done backwards so dating isn't a thing it's like you get engaged first and during the engagement period that's when you're getting to know each other and then if you decide like that you like each other then you get married but if you don't then like you break off the engagement so basically boyfriends and girlfriends aren't really a thing in Egypt I don't know if that has changed like as of today because I know times have changed everywhere in the world so if you're an Egyptian and you're watching this comment down below and let me know how it is in Egypt like is dating a thing because according to my parents and every other Egyptian I've ever encountered here in America this is the norm so after I made it very clear to my parents that this was not happening and they were cool with it they were like okay that's fine they had the nerve to tell me that I need to call them up, his parent, Tim's parents up, and tell Tim's parents that I wasn't interested in marrying their son. I said, no, 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 no. Tim's parents came to you guys with this proposal, so you guys are gonna be the ones to deliver this message to Tim's parents not me. So I really don't know how that conversation went down when my parents told them that message because I didn't really care to ask about it, but uh, I'm kind of curious now, so I might actually have to ask my mom later today. So funny thing, actually, this is just one story out of a couple 
proposal stories that I have gotten because like I said, this is how it's done in our culture and the guys that are asking for my hand in marriage don't understand that I'm Americanized and they don't understand that I expect to date someone before I become engaged to them. It's just very different here for me than it is in Egypt because I know what like my cousins back in Egypt look for in a guy is completely different than what I look for in a guy here because I am so blessed enough to have had the opportunity to go to college and make my own money and you know be this independent person whereas in Egypt I really feel like and like I said I'm not sure so if you're Egyptian comment down below but like I feel like girls depend a lot more on guys for financial reasons. Um, I do want to make this very clear though. My parents and I are completely on the same page with like dating and marriage and all of that. They're very understanding of my point of view and my perspective on like dating and engagement and marriage and all that stuff. They know that I grew up here in this culture and this is the norm for me. So they're very supportive. They're not like stubborn about it. They just want him to be a good person to me and a man of God and who knows whether this guy is going to be American, Egyptian, whatever he may be. I don't discriminate. I just hope that he is a fun. <laughs> I know that God has a special person out there for me and I know that I'll be happy with him because God picked him for me. So that is my story time of how a complete stranger aka Tim asked for my hand in marriage when I was a sophomore in college. Sorry Tim, but it's a no from me dog. Alright guys, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed this little story. Let me know what you thought of it down below in the comments and thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Bye!